as 2023 is coming to a close, and as tough as everything has been this past year, as tough as the economy is, I believe that we're entering a season of blessing. And I want you to be blessed and not cursed, above and not beneath, riding and not walking. And so I wanted to share this message with you that I called blessed by association. Blessed by association. Here is Jesus about to speak to a multitude of people. He, the crowds were getting bigger because his fame was, was spreading. And uh, G- Jesus walks up here to the Sea of Galilee and he sees uh, a couple of fishermen's boats parked. And there, the fishermen are there next to him. They're washing their nets so he could ask them, hey, excuse me, guys, uh, whose boat is this? And Peter says, that's my boat. Would you help me out a little bit here? I, I'd like to get in one of the boats and just go out a little bit into the water and, and address the crowd that's here. And Peter was happy to oblige. And he gave Jesus use of his boat. It put a natural barrier between him and this large crowd. And the water also acts as a sound magnifier, a natural amplifier, if you will. And so Jesus speaks to this crowd of people that are standing by the lake. And then afterwards, he did something that he's known for doing. Peter gave his boat. So now Jesus wants to give back to Peter. It's a principle that God has established. Give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. And so Peter gave and, and, and Jesus wants to give back. Amen. And in Luke 5 verse 4, it says, Now when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft of fish. Again, Notice he said, let down your nets, more than one, plural. Then Jesus wants to bless Peter. Peter just blessed Jesus. And and the Bible says, give and it shall be given. Uh, Peter just blessed Jesus. Jesus wants to bless Peter. He said, hey, launch out into the deep. Go out into the deep uh, uh, part of the lake here and let down your nets for a big haul of fish. Now, Simon Peter is a professional fisherman. He'd been fishing all night and they hadn't caught anything. And Simon answering said unto him, master, We've toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. (laughs) Singular. Jesus said, let down your nets. And Peter said, man, we've been out fishing all night and and we're professional fishermen. And we, you know, we know this, uh, this sea here, if you will. And uh, we haven't caught anything. But you seem like a sharp man, and I enjoyed hearing the words you spoke. Uh, we'll, we'll put one of the nets down if you want us to, but you know, I, I hate to waste my time. You know, I've been working all night. We're just cleaning the nets because we hadn't caught anything. And, I, and you're a great speaker, but you might not know much about fishing. Hello. I don't know what all was going through Peter's mind, but those might have been some of the thoughts. And so Peter said, I'll let down one net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net broke their, their nest was starting to break and they called their other partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and they filled both ships so that the two boats began to sink folks i want to tell you this was more fish than they had ever caught in their entire fishing career amen i know this because when fishermen go out to fish they take a stringer that's 100 feet long you know They've only put fish on this much of it, but they, they buy that long stringer just in case. You look, if, if you don't fish, but your husband fishes, look in his tackle box. You'll find some hooks this big to catch a big grouper, a big red drum, big fish. They may have never caught one, but it's there just in case, you know. They always have one of them big hooks in there. Just in case, they have lures that are bigger than most of the fish they caught. Hello? And they have in there just in case, because that's how fishermen are. And if a fisherman ever went out and fished and filled his boat so full that it began to sink, as soon as he could, he'd have himself a bigger boat. Amen. These guys have been fishing all their lives. They never caught this many fish. They had blessed Jesus, and Jesus said, I'm going to bless you. And whenever you sow, you're going to reap. And whenever you reap, you're going to reap more than what you sowed. Amen. Peter said, we've been out there. We've fished all night. We didn't catch anything. Jesus said, just trust me. Cast your, your nets out. And Peter said, I'll throw one net out. And the net broke because there was more fish than one net could hold. He had to bring both boats and both boats had to drop both nets. They had four nets out there and they caught so many fish, the boats began to sink. Man. And I want you to notice something. Peter is the one that sowed into the ministry. Peter is the one that gave. 
the use of his boat, but the blessing didn't just come to Peter. It came to his partners as well. Now, they hadn't sowed yet, yet they reaped, and they received a blessing by association. Peter's partners got blessed because they were associated with Peter, and Peter gave. I want you to understand that. I'm talking about being blessed by association. If dad serves the Lord, and if dad is faithful to God, dad will get blessed, and if dad's blessed... I want to tell you something, mom's going to get blessed too. Hello. I guarantee you. If dad's blessed, mom's going to get blessed too. And if dad and mom are blessed, the kids are going to get blessed too. The children are going to be blessed. One day I went to my son's house and he had a brand new truck. Beautiful truck, man. Nice. F-450, something like that. Nice truck. I said, whose truck is this? He said, it's my truck. I said, where'd you get it? And my son just laughed. <laughs> I said, Anthony, this is your truck? He said, yes, my truck. I said, where'd you get it? He just said, <laughs> and then his son said, Uncle Leonard gave it to him. I went, oh, I, I called my brother. I said, Leonard, you gave a truck to Anthony? He said, yeah. He said, it was so funny. He said, Anthony came out to the farm and he saw that truck and he loved it. And I told him I was going to give it to him. And uh, that night we were coming to the house to sleep. And Anthony said, no, I'm going to sleep out here in my truck. Amen. <laughs> I said, you're kidding me, he slept out. He said, he slept outside in the bed of that truck. Boy, he loved it, amen. Now, Anthony, you know, wasn't the one that my mom prayed for, and, and, and he wasn't the one that, you know, was, had the, he got blessed by association. Hello. See, what I want you to understand, Dad, is if, if you'll be faithful to God, God will bless you, and as a result of your blessing, your family's going to be blessed, amen? Your wife's going to be blessed. Your children are going to be blessed. Your friends are going to be blessed. Where you work is going to be blessed, amen? Other people will be blessed by, because they're associated with you, amen? Peter's the one that sowed the seed here, yet Peter's partners got blessed, amen? They got blessed by association, Luke 5, verse 6, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net broke. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ships, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink. Peter was the one that sowed. Peter was the one that uh, Jesus told, let down the nets. And, and, and Peter wasn't even completely faithful. He's just a little faithful. He let down one net, which wasn't enough. It was, God had planned too much. Amen. In verse 9 it says, For he was astonished in all that were with him at the draft of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. You know, I want to point out something in this sentence that you might have noticed. It says that they caught a multitude of fishes. And you say, well, isn't that incorrect? Isn't that wrong grammar? Shouldn't it say a multitude of fish? No. There's a, different, there's a time when you use fish and there's a time when you use fishes. See, if you go out and you're trying to catch catfish and you catch a bunch of catfish, then you caught a bunch of fish. But if you catch catfish and you catch bass and you catch trout and, and you catch a gar, well, then you caught fishes, different kinds. Peter had been fishing all night. He said, we didn't catch anything. But now their nets were filled with fishes, different kinds, tilapia, bass, trout, Whatever kind of fish was in that lake, everything that they had, he was catching it. Amen. Wow. And his partners were also blessed by association. You know, I think 2024 is going to be a year of blessing. And I know it's an election year. And, and during election year, good things tend to happen a little bit. Like prices may drop a little bit on gas. Uh, interest rates may drop a little bit. That's normal. You know, it's amazing what politicians can do when they want your vote. Hello. But I think it's, a, it's an important time to be faithful in our sowing because it's going to be a, a season of blessing. And if a person is faithful to God and they're giving, God's going to bless them with abundance. And when God blesses you, then others associated with you are also going to be blessed. If dad's blessed, the whole family is blessed. And the, and the children will be blessed. And they may not even be old enough to understand the principle of sowing and reaping. They may have never uh, had a job. They've never sowed financially, yet they're going to be blessed because of the association and because of their father's faithfulness to God. Amen? 
Who we hang around with is important. Uh, youngsters, you might have heard your parents say that. Hey, be careful who you hang out with. I'm talking about being blessed by association. See, your relationships are important. Who you hang out with is important. Amen? In Proverbs 13, verse 20, it says this. He that walketh with the wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Look at what it's saying there. It says, if you hang out with wise people, you're going to be wise. But if you hang out with foolish people, you're going to be destroyed. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't get much clearer than that. Amen. Who you spend time with is important. Who you have a relationship with is important. If you think about some of the happiest times in your life, just, you might just think about a moment just right now. Just think about some of the happiest times of your life. The most fun times of your life. If you think about those times, I'll bet you there were other people involved. Those relationships can bring you joy or they can bring you sorrow. The relationships that you choose in life will bring you success or failure. In the book of Malachi, the Bible says this in Malachi 3 verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, you're gone away from mine ordinances. Now he's talking to the leaders of the city here. He says, you've gone away from my ordinance and you've not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. And you say, wherein have we robbed me? He says, in tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse for you have robbed me. And then he says this, even this whole nation. See, you can be blessed by association, but you can also be cursed by association. He's telling the leaders of, the, of the, the city. He said, you're cursed because you've robbed me. You haven't kept your covenant with me. He said, you're cursed and this whole nation is cursed. Why? Because you're running it. You're cursed and everybody else is cursed by association. Hello. Just like you can be blessed by association, you can be cursed by association. Be careful who you hang out with. Hello. Relationships are important. He says, even this whole nation. It wasn't just the leaders that were cursed, but the entire nation, everyone associated with those leaders would be cursed because of their bad choices. It's not just the blessing that's passed on by association, but the curse as well. God spoke to Peter about this net, which it's interesting to me because net spelled backwards is 10, which is in relationship to the tithe. But when we're faithful to God, we're blessed and everyone associated with us will be blessed. They may not be blessed as much, but they're going to be blessed or cursed by association. Look at the guy they call little rocket man in North Korea, Kim Jong-un. He's a corrupt leader. And he's been cursed in North Korea, while South Korea is blessed. And the funny thing is, North and South Korea are connected. They were one nation at one time. They were Korea. It's the same land. When it rains, they both get the rain. You know, when it's hot, they're both hot. They get the same rain, the same weather, the same sunshine. Yet, one of them is cursed and the other is blessed. In South Korea, the people are blessed. They eat bulgogi and kimchi. I don't know if you ever ate those things, but they're pretty good. Amen. But, the, but in, in North Korea, the people are poor. And they're eating dog meat. Because their leader is cursed. The leader is corrupt. <clears throat> and, and the population of North Korea, some of them are related to the people in South Korea. They're, they're family members, same family. Yet the one in the, in the north are cursed and the one in the south are blessed. And the reason the one in the north are cursed is they're cursed by association with their leader. He's cursed and the whole nation with him. Cursed by association. Do you remember what happened to Achan in the Old Testament? Achan had taken, taken an accursed thing, something that belonged to God, and put it amongst his own stuff. And it was a picture of the tithe. See, when, when Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, God said, bring all the, the spoils into the house of God. That, it's your first victory. It's like your first tenth. That belongs to God. He said, that belongs to me. Bring it into the house of God. And then every other battle, the spoils are yours. But just bring the first to me. That's what God tells us. Bring in the first tenth, the first tithe. But if you remember, Joshua won the battle of Jericho 
And Achan went in and he took some things that he was supposed to bring to the house of God and he put them amongst his own stuff. It was a picture of the tithe and, and him stealing the tithe. And when Joshua found out what happened, uh, then he punished Achan. Joshua seven nineteen it says, And Joshua said to Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done. This is what I did. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold, 50 shekels in weight, I coveted them. You know, I wanted them. And I took them. And behold, they're hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. And so Joshua sent messengers and they ran into the tent. And behold, it was hidden his tent and the silver under it, just like he said. Achan had decided he wasn't going to be obedient to God, to the word of God. And as a result, Joshua lost the battle of Ai, the first battle. And Joshua didn't know why he lost. He, he, was, he was cursed instead of blessed. And he says, why am I cursed? Because somebody associated with you sinned. He was cursed by association. It was one of his soldiers that was uh, disobedient to God. Joshua fell on his face and said, God, why is this happening to me? And God said, get up off your face. God was saying, it's not my fault. If there's a problem here, it's not with me. Hello. God says, I'm faithful. But somebody in your camp has been unfaithful. And so, so Joshua searched and he found Achan, found out that that was the one who was unfaithful. Achan admitted it. And in verse 24, Joshua 7, it says, And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold, and his sons, wait a minute, his sons didn't do anything. Uh, I imagine when they took his sons, his sons said, Oh, hold up, we, we didn't take anything. It was dad. Yeah, you got the wrong guy here. It, it, it wasn't us. But it says he took his sons and his daughters... Are you kidding me? His daughter's like, hey, hey, wait a minute. We were at home. We weren't even in the battle. We, didn't, we were cooking tostitos or something. I don't know. We were making crepes at home, you know. We weren't even, we, we're not soldiers. We had nothing to do with this. No, it's your dad. Yeah, but, but we didn't do anything. It says it took his sons and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and, and his dog. And I imagine the dog went, rut roll. <laughs> you know, man, are you kidding me? I can imagine the dog going, no, 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 it wasn't me. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't. The sheep were like, bad, you know. No, this, this looks bad, you know. They, they, hadn't, they didn't do anything. But yet they took them all. Because they were associated with him. They were his sheep, his oxen, his sons, his daughters, his wife. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and buried them with fire, burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. They killed them all. They stoned them all. They burned them all. And, and, the, and most of them didn't do anything. But they were cursed by associations because dad messed up. They all got cursed. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from his fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place is called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Notice the punishment didn't just affect Achan. But everyone associated with him. They were cursed by association. Have you ever told your teen, I don't want you hanging out with those boys. I don't want you to hang out with that crowd. But mom, you know I'm not going to do any drugs. You know I'm not going to drink. You know I'm going to behave. Well, it doesn't matter. Because if they misbehave... If they get drunk, it may affect you. Hello. If they get, if they get pulled over and, and the police find drugs in their car and you're in the car with them, you're guilty by association. Oh, let me tell you something that happened a long time ago. Uh, it was in the school that we had on Charles Street. It was the old Humble Elementary School. We bought that for... Um, let me tell you what we bought it for. We bought that for $400,000. We, I paid $400,000 for the old Humble Elementary School on Charles Street in Noble, Texas. And some of the members of the church tell me, you're crazy, you shouldn't have done that. 
And I even had some people get angry at me and they left the church because I bought that building. Two years later, I sold that building for $3.6 million. Those people called me back. They said, can you teach us how to do that? I said, well, I'd be happy to, but you know, it wouldn't be right for me to take somebody else's sheep. You're going to church somewhere else. Go to your pastor and ask him. I wasn't being mean, but that's just the truth. Hello. Boy, afterwards, they thought I was a hero. <laughs> and they were like, man, show us how to do that. That wasn't such a bad idea after all. Amen. But I, I remember when we were there at that school, one day the school principal was walking down the hallway and he saw a little vial about this big and it had some white powder in it and it was laying on the, in, in the hallway. And he picked up, he got real nervous, he came to me, he said, Pastor, look what I found in the hallway. What is this? I said, I have no idea. He said, do you think it's drugs? I said, I don't know. I doubt it. I said, probably some kid put it down there to get us excited. <laughs> I don't know. I said, but it could, I don't know, it could be sugar, it could be salt, it could be BC powder. I don't know what it is. He said, you think we ought to take it to the police station? I said, well, let me call the police and ask them. You know, so, I, so I called the police and one of the police officers said, I'll be over there in a little bit. And he came by. And he tested. He said, it's nothing. He said, it's probably some aspirin. I said, all right. I appreciate it. I said, I was going to take it by your, your office over there so you didn't have to come. He said, well, I'm glad you didn't do that. I said, why is that? He said, if you'd have got pulled over on your way to the police station and you would have had this in your car and it was drugs, you'd be in jail right now. I said, but you know it's not mine. He goes, of course I know it's not yours. He said, but what do you think every drug user says when we pull them over. It isn't mine. <laughs> no, no. That's my jacket, but I didn't put it in there. No. And then it pulled you over and then said, hey, what's this? And you would have said, I don't know. It's not mine. And they went, yeah, right. And you'd be in jail today. Whoo. I said, well, I'll never do that. Amen. <laughs> I'll call you. Y'all come get it. Amen. Come and take it. Amen. Is it Gonzalez? Is that what that is? Come and take it. You know, I'm not going to take it over there. It would be guilt by association. You see, that's what they call that. Guilt by association. Jesus never approached Peter's partner that day. They didn't sow into his ministry, yet their boat was filled with so many fish, their boat began to sink because they were with Peter. They were partners with Peter, and they were blessed by association. I want you to know something today. I'm blessed and not cursed. Above and not beneath, riding and not walking. Stick with me, amen. Amen. Keep coming to church. Get blessed by association, amen? When a company hires faithful Christian employees, their business gets blessed because they work there. Surround yourself with strong believers. Go to church. Get to meet other believers. Iron sharpens iron, amen? That's why I have friends like Creflo Dollar and Jesse Duplantis and Jerry Seville, and my best friend, Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, amen? You, that ought to be your best friend, Amen? Sometimes I get blessed just because I'm a Christian, amen? There was an evil king named Balak in the Bible that worshiped Baal. He wanted to curse Israel, so he hired a man named Balaam, who he knew heard from God. And he told Balaam, I'll pay you to curse Israel. And in Numbers 23, verse 8, it says, how can I curse whom God has not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord God, God has not defied? Balaam was saying, I can't curse who God blessed. Nothing can stop the blessing of God from coming. But it wasn't just them that got blessed, but everyone associated with them was blessed by association. Like I said, when dad is faithful, everyone in the family gets blessed. The sons, the, the, the wife, the daughters. But if you're unfaithful, everyone in the family gets cursed. Hey, hello. It's just how God made it work out. There was a company here in Houston a while back. They were based in Turkey, it was an oil-related company, and they had offices here in Houston. And the company had done really good one year, and then they sold, and they made a lot of money, and I'm talking about a lot of money. And they decided to give their employees a bonus after they sold. Uh, they had 1,400 em uh, 1, employees. And uh, the Turkish employees, each, each employee received an average of $240,000 bonus. Nearly a quarter of a million dollar bonus. That's a good bonus, isn't it? That's a company you want to be working for, amen. 
they got blessed and they blessed their employees. The employees in Houston, on average, received a $100,000 bonus. Every employee that worked there, from the janitor to the president, a bonus of $100,000. Those were some happy employees. Now, the reason I mention that to you is because there were some employees that had quit the company a month or two before. And they got nothing. And they complained. And they wanted to sue the company. And they said, why didn't we get any money? They said, because you're not with us anymore. You don't work here. You quit. You left us. And uh, the bonus was for employees that were with us. And so some were blessed by association. And some didn't receive a blessing because they were no longer associated. Hello. I want you to be blessed and not cursed. Above and not beneath. Riding and not walking. This is going to be a year of blessing and I want you to be blessed. In Genesis 12 verse 1, look at what God tells Abraham. It says, now the Lord said to Abram, get thee out of the, the country, out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and I will make your name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless him that bless thee and I will curse him that curse thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now notice this is God speaking and he says, I want you to do these things because I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make you a blessing and everyone that blesses you is going to be blessed and everyone that curses you is going to be cursed. Now, God is God. He can do whatever he wants. Why didn't he just bless him? Instead of saying, I'm going to bless you. He wanted to see if he'd be faithful. He said, I want you to get away from your people, get away from your country. I want you to go and, uh, because I'm going to bless you. But I'm going to first find out if you're faithful. And, and he was faithful and God blessed him. And God said, I'm gonna, not just going to bless you, but I'm going to bless those that bless you. And I'm going to curse those that curse you. Now, when I hear that, see... Uh, I'm going to bless those that bless you. Then I want to go find the children of Abraham and I want to bless them. Amen. Because <laughs> God made an everlasting covenant that I'm going to bless those who bless you. America has been a friend to Israel for many, many years. The first time Israel was attacked uh, by those Scud missiles, I don't know if you remember that years ago when George W. was president, I think. They didn't want Israel to go into battle with these other Arab countries because... That would bring out an all-out war, and they knew it. Even though they were being attacked, these Scud missiles were coming over. America had Patriot missiles blow those things out of the sky. That was the hand of God blocking all those missiles. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you great. And why is America, one of the youngest countries on the planet, so blessed? I'm going to bless them that bless you. And I'm going to curse them that curse you. God keeps his promise, amen. God keeps his promises, amen. Laban, in, in Genesis 30, verse 27, Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Laban's telling uh, Jacob, <clears throat> stick around. Because I've noticed that I'm blessed because you're here. Blessed by association. Isaac was blessed and, and, and Laban was blessed by association. I said, Jacob, it was Isaac. In 1 Kings 15, it says, Now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nabat reigned Ab Abraham over Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Mekah the daughter of Absalom. And he walked in the sins of his father, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David, his father. Nevertheless, for David's sake did the Lord give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him to establish Jerusalem. This guy wasn't serving the Lord. But he received a blessing because he was associated with King David, who did. And because he was associated with David, God still blessed him. He was blessed by association. Let's stand together. One last thing I would challenge you to do before you leave today. In the year that we're about to enter, you don't need to, to
to pray and tell God about all your needs. Why not? Well, because God already promised to supply all your needs. So if you need it, don't ask him and don't worry. Just rest on his promise. God keeps his promises and God said that he will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. But instead when you pray this coming years, let God know what you want. Amen. Let him know what you, you desire. And choose your friends wisely. God wants you to be blessed to be a blessing. He wants you to be blessed so you can bless others. And that others can be blessed because they're associated with you. Amen. God wants to bless you, your spouse, your children, your family, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your future. Amen. And I know he can. And I know he keeps his word. Amen. Let's pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Thanks for watching the program. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'd love to invite you to come out and join us for service here at Christian Life Center. We're located right here in Kingwood, Texas, behind the Fine Arts Community Center called the Nathaniel Center. Uh, our building is right behind it. We're in Building D. Our address is 806 Russell Palmer Road, Kingwood, Texas, and the zip is 77339. Listen, Christian Life Center is a church designed to meet the needs of the entire family. We have programs for single and married adults and kiddos of all ages. Vacation Bible School is coming up soon uh, in July, and your kids will love it. This year's theme is called Joy Story, and we're going to have some of the uh, vehicles from the movie Cars out here and some characters in costume. Your kids are going to love it. We have a great uh, daycare and Christian school that your children can be a part of. And uh, come out and join us. If you need more information, give us a call. Our phone number is 713-398-9282. And would you consider uh, sowing a seed into the ministry? You know, you can text an offering uh, by simply calling the number on your screen, 844-297-9517. Uh, 844-297-9517. Nine five one seven. You can text an offering of any amount to that number, and we'll receive it, and you'll have a record of your giving. Once again, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the service, and we're looking forward to seeing you here at Christian Life Center in the near future. God bless you.